Assalamu alaikum. Shalom, Hotep. Peace, peace. Assalamu alaikum to the mighty, mighty FOIs and MGTs. Hotep, peace on these streets. I'm your brother in the struggle, Brother Minister Ali. And today we're going to touch on some more of Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings on Ramadan, specifically the two different types of Ramadan. Um, in Nashra Islam teachings, we have our December Ramadan, but the Orthodox Muslims, as they're commonly known, those that follow the Sunnah, the Salafi, the Shia, the Ahmadiyya, it's, it's so many different methods are schools of thought in Islam today. But basically the Muslims, the majority of the Muslims around the world, they Ramadan according to the Holy Quran and the lunar month. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put us in a position and in a condition where he dealt with that aspect in his teachings. So he wanted us to understand that our official Ramadan is the month of December. However, it is not a sin if you Ramadan with the Orthodox Muslims also. However, when you look at the Muhammad speaks, um, when you look at the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when you look at the Muslims in the nation of Islam in the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, you, you'll see that they, Ramadan, collectively in December, but they did not Ramadan collectively with the Orthodox Muslims. However, once the Messenger's son took over the nation of Islam after 1975, that's when Imam Wurfdin Muhammad and Muhammad Speaks explained that he was changing the Ramadan from December to exclusively for the nation's line of Ramadan with the Orthodox Muslims. So we're going to recap and refresh our memories on what was it that the Honorable Muhammad taught us regarding how to eat to live as it pertains to the different Ramadans. Let me begin with a verse from the Holy Quran that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad viewed as pertaining to the so-called American Negroes. We're coming from the Holy Quran, Surah or chapter 2, ayat or verse 185. In fact, I'm going to take it from 184 through 185. The Holy Quran teaches us in the chapter on the cow. For a certain number of days, but who, I don't want to start like that because it sounds like you're missing something. Let me take you even further back. Let's go back here. So we're going to start it from 183 and take you all with the 185. I want to give you the, the proper context, if you will, the full context. All right. It says, Surah chapter 2, Ayat verse 183. O oh, you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you so that you may guard against evil. So here we see that, first of all, fasting is a, you know, a ancient teachings. It predates the Holy Prophet Muhammad, thoughts of peace be upon him. It, it you know. They Ramadan in the Torah. The Jews were taught fasting. The Christians were taught fasting. And if you study other cultures around the world, you'll see that fasting was practiced globally. And you know, what I mean, ants fast, dogs fast, cats fast, birds fast. The people of China, India, all over Africa, Mexico, Canada, the islands, Europeans. Everyone on earth practiced some form of fasting. I mean, whether it was for spiritual or religious reasons or for healing purposes or to prevent diseases and things of that nature there. Okay, so all you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you 
so that you may guard against evil for a certain number of days. But whoever among you is sick or on a journey, he shall fast. I would like to say he or she. He or she shall fast a like number of other days. And those who find it extremely hard may affect redemption by feeding a poor man or a poor person. So whoever does good spontaneously, it is better for them. And that you fast is better for you if you know. So here the Quran shows that, you know, you don't supposed to get spooky when it comes to Ramadan. It's like, it's the month of Ramadan. We got, I got to fast, this, that, and the other. And you're, uh, I'm just using some hypothetical situations. You're a diabetic. You know what I mean? You're, you, you're a cancer patient. And you're taking some harsh medication. The doctor put on the prescription bottle, you have to eat before you take the medication. You taking the medication because you're Ramadan and you're not eating your food. Now, I mean, you know, you're, you're, some people get so spooky with it, they take the medication without drinking no water. Now, I mean, I done, I done seen all types of things in my ministry for over the, for over 40 years now. Now, I mean, so, so, I always try to explain to people there are exceptions, meaning that you can Ramadan, you can fast, but you don't supposed to harm yourself. We don't commit acts of violence on ourselves. You know what I mean? So you so your Ramadan is not being broken if you have a common sense, legitimate reason why you need to drink something, you need to eat something. You know what I mean? You know, it's like um uh I remember years ago in the Belly of the Beast, brothers used to um, work inside. They had to feed like 6,000 prisoners. And, you, you you know, they're using giant pots, I mean, wider than the width of a man's arms. And it was so much steam and heat. Now, I mean, they got to cook boil hot coffee and grits and they feeding all the prisoners and all that stuff like that there and they're working around dangerous equipment meaning if you're fasting and you get disorientated that steam you can't breathe you pass out you fall i mean like i don't know if you ever seen um boiling scalding hot coffee it literally melts the flesh right off of a person. I mean, you know, so you 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 have people that uh, I, I remember um, seeing a, a, a lost foul throw some coffee on someone. I mean, and it melted the man's face. And I mean, you know, so so you got to be aware. You got to be alert. You got to be dependable. You got to be cognizant about your work environment because your safety can not only affect you, it can affect others. I mean, if your job is at the factory and you're doing certain things and you didn't eat and you feeling weak, <laughs> you can't nod out, you can't pass out right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's giant cutters that cut people's hands right off. I mean, you, you know, I mean, my cousin um, Kevin, he used to work at the, um, in, in Philadelphia, he used to work at the, um, the docks. I mean, they and they would come in with these giant ships and just pour a mountain of fish. I mean, they used to tell me how they had this medical salt, pink salt. They throw all the salt on there because the birds come get all on the fish and lay maggots all in it. So they got to hose that stuff down and clean it and try to make the fish look fresh, even though it's not fresh. I mean, you know, and it's, and it's like the knives were so sharp. It's ridiculous. And I noticed he had all these cuts on his hands. I was like, yo, what happened to your hands? So, man, I was working out. They pay good money, but that stuff. I mean, I, every time I go to work, I see people cutting fingers off, all that. That's that's a common occurrence. You know what I mean? You're supposed to wear these special gloves that, you know what I mean? But you'd be so slow. You got to, you know what I mean? I was like, man. You know what I mean? And he, he was there for a while with me. You know what I mean? And he used to fast and stuff like that there. But you have to be careful. You know what I mean? So the Holy Quran... Allah teaches us that 
your Ramadan, your fasting, Allah doesn't desire difficulty. He desires ease. I mean, he, he desires benefits, spiritual as well as literal. So whoever among you is sick, and surely, I mean, after chattel slavery, you don't think every black man and woman and child in the wilderness of North America and around the world through colonization is not suffering from anxiety and depression. <laughs> I mean, it's like we have mental illness. We, 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 you, if we're genetically from this land in the East, I mean, and it produces our DNA food and you take us out of Africa and out of Asia and disperse us all around the planet Earth. And now we're over here and we're eating hybrid fruits like corn and spinach. And we're now eating collard greens and pig feet and chitlins and things that's like contrary to our DNA, contrary to our very nature. It literally make us sick. I mean, it, it, it genetically um, um, make our blood of it in itself. So you have a lot of black men and women and children suffering from pre-diabetes and diabetes and strokes and heart attacks and cancers, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, bad cholesterol, you name it. I mean, you know, it's all this processed food we forced to eat because we're out of our element. OK, so law gives us an exception here if we're sick. Or on a journey, which our lessons teach us in English lesson number C1, we're 9,000 miles away from home, so we know we're on a journey. I mean, we know we strayed away from the Surat al Mustaqim. We are not on the straight path. We're trying to get back on it by following the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings, but he warned us in how they delivered um, book number two on page 75. He said, Leave my teachings as it is. Now, I mean, that's, how, that's the straight and narrow way. We got we to gotta stick with that raw truth as revealed to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And those who find it extremely hard may affect redemption by feeding a poor man. Now, I mean, so, you know, you can literally say, okay, well, I can't Ramadan. Now, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm competing in the Olympics. <laughs> I'm on a football team. Now, I mean, I need to, I need to beef up. I'm, I'm a heavyweight boxer. Now, I mean, I gotta, I gotta make sure that um, I, I'm, I'm able to compete and perform my job. You know, I'm a heavy duty construction worker. I mean, I, I, I work jackhammers all day. You know what I mean, I got to break through granite. You know what I mean? I, I work in the mines. I, I work in coal mines and I got to dig through all these rocks. We, 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 we making um, tunnels for trains and laying train tracks. It's, it's hard manual laborers out there, men and women. You know what I mean? And there's, there's, Ex exceptions for like, okay, well, then I can't Ramadan this year. I'm, but I'm making so much money at this job. Now, I mean, you'd be like, okay, well, you could take and help someone that's in straighter needs than you that needs some assistance financially. Now, I mean, so the Holy Quran teaches us, um, you can feed a poor man. Now, I mean, you know, be on tip like, okay, since I'm eating, I can afford an extra meal. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a help. This homeless brother, make sure he eat. Now, I mean, when I eat, he going to eat. Now, I mean, or she going to eat. Or I'm going to give him the money so they can eat. Now, I mean, and and, 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 and your neon or your intention is what Allah is looking at. Now, I mean, so the Holy Quran goes on in verse 185, the month of Ramadan. Now, the root meaning of Ramadan is excessive heat. It's like the month of July. It's like summertime in Arabia. Now, I mean, now imagine being in the Arabian desert covering 2,200 miles in the summer. Now, I mean, it's hot. Now, I mean, Libya, Tripoli, Libya is like one of the hottest spots on the planet Earth. Now, I mean, so the Holy Quran tells us that the month of Ramadan is a, it's a symbolic way of saying this is how you detox. This is how you purify yourself. Now, I mean, I, I remember uh, years ago, I, I read a final call. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he was like with the Native American Indians and they was like in the sweat lodge. And I mean, you know, excessive heat, getting impurities out spiritually and literally the pores open up. And I mean, I, I remember um, this um, barber, he um, he put the hot towel 
around my face. Put the put the like the lemon and this cool gel and I mean exfoliated the dead skin cells and he put that hot towel on it. He's like, whoa. But when you get the shave and you get the impurities all out, and he took that towel off, man. It was like whew. Like I was a new man. I mean, like, like, like he he took five years off my off off my um age. Now I mean, just taking all that dead skin and bacteria out out of my pores. Now I mean, you know, so so it's a thing where symbolically we want to purify ourselves in this wicked world. Now I mean, we're living in hell on earth. Now I mean, you know, we live in, uh, in the world of Poison foods, drugs, alcohol, pollution. The Holy Quran teaches us corruption has appeared on the land and the sea on account of what mankind hands have wrought. Now, I mean, we deal with polluted people. Now, I mean, polluted ideas. So, Ramadan is a good time to purify. Now, I mean, and surely we need to, to I mean, you know, to purify ourselves. Now, I mean, I, um, you know, I, I personally... Don't Ramadan with the Orthodox Muslims, but I have Ramadan with the Orthodox Muslims in the in the past. Now I mean, I I I didn't Ramadan. I Ramadan with the Orthodox Muslims because we were in a situation where all you had a Catholic priest running the Ramadan. You had um, the devil with the facility. So all Muslims, whether you were Sunni, Nation Islam, Moorish American, 5% or whatever, all Muslims had to, all Islamic thinkers had the Ramadan the same month with the Orthodox Muslims inside this Christian chapel that was used for Islamic services. You know what I mean, so under under those circumstances, you know what I mean, it's like, okay, you know what I mean, actions judged by intentions. However, to their credit, to our credit, everybody went in understanding the circumstances and that knee out of their attention. So every no one was in there trying to convert each other. I mean, we we would dialogue. You know what I mean? Dispute the best of manners, have fun. You know what I mean? We we you know we 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 challenge each other theologically, but no disrespect. You know what I mean, in, in all the years I've seen it, we never fought or none of that kind. It was always a good period of peace and unity. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, it was it was a good experience. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm one of those nation of Islam conservative types. Like I'm I'm just rotten with the teachers and I'm Elijah Muhammad. If it ain't the mess of teachers, I I ain't I ain't attracted to it. You gotta be teaching the black man, God the white man, the devil, the Muslim program, you know what I mean, you know, the, the you know the lessons Master for Muhammad, I mean, you know, you got to, you got to, for the, the track, it got to be that black power, <laughs> I mean, and when I say that, I have no problem whatsoever dealing with white Muslims of faith, respect them, I met plenty of them, I mean, you know, give them the greetings, you know what I mean, talk to them, dialogue, let them ask questions, whatever, you know, it, but they understand, like, I, I stand on the foundation of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, plain and simple. So I, I don't have no problem with that. What I do have a problem with is if you're a new FOI or MGT and you're not rooted and the teachers that I'm Elijah Muhammad, and you're Ramadan with Orthodox Muslims, it can confuse you. So I've seen believers, past and present, I mean, that when you listen to that dialogue, the message teaches us in our lessons on, on hypocrisy, that the hypocrite says that which no Muslim will say, does that which no Muslim will do. Now, I mean, you know, so you start seeing them get spooky, if you will. That's the that's the layman terms I like to use. They they get spooky because the ministers, the captains, the secretaries are allowing them in that immaturity to hear this mystery guy. So so my thing, you gotta be real careful about your observance of duty when it comes to Master Muhammad and his messenger. Because 
they'll come out like start acting and talking like a, a orthodox Muslim. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's like, all right, now if you if you your intent is something, that's one thing. You're trying to teach me something cool, but it's it's totally different from you worshiping a rule law or a spirit god from you worshiping Hua Allahi, he the God. We believe in Hua Allahi, the he the God. We believe that God is man. They don't believe God is man. And when they when they Ramadan, you know, it's it's like you'll find more FOIs Ramadaning with the Orthodox Muslims than vice versa. You're not going to see a bunch of Kufis <laughs> come to, in December to Ramadan with the FOI. They be like, oh, no, I, I mean, I, I, we had, I met brothers that do that, I mean, but they they were either close to certain brothers, I mean, or they was like, okay, well, I just want to um, eat a better meal because I know fruit going to eat that good stuff, I mean, you know. And and some people do it because that thing. Oh, I want to go to the id. I want to go to the id fitter, the id Ada, what have you. Now I mean, the message to the black. The message says we have two great ids after Ramadan. Now I mean, but again, there's there's dominant and recessive. It's, it's like in America, the government, this nation, they have official governmental holidays. And then they have other holidays. They be like, that's, that's a holiday, but we really don't recognize it like that. Now, it's not illegal for you to practice it, but we ain't closing the government. We're not shutting down the banks. They be like, okay, we do that for New Year's, Thanksgiving, Christmas. You know what I mean? But they be like, um, the government, like, we're not shutting the government down for Black History Month. <laughs> we're, not, we're not shutting it down for uh, what we got going on right now. We, you know what I mean? You got the um, the uh, Irish um, holiday or something of that nature there. That thing is like, we're we not going to close the banks for Halloween, though they recognize it. You know what I mean? You know, so that's the position that all nations have. You got your dominant recessive positions in the culture. So in the nation of Islam, the id fitter and the id order, it's there, but it's not a dominant theme in the nation of Islam. The messenger, what they more or like, more like was more was more dominant with the nation was like Muslim bazaars, if you will. Now, I mean, you know, the uh, brothers and sisters would Ramadan, but you know, you, you're not going to see the um, Muhammad Speaks cover stories like, oh, it's the month of Ramadan. That's, that's what I mean. Um, happy Ramadan, <laughs> Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Now, I mean, the, the message is like, hey, because this thing was he was trying to keep our distinction. I mean, he's like, he's like, nah, we're not growing beards and we're not wearing kufis. It's not a problem wearing a beard or growing a kufi. Now, I mean, depending on your knee, your tent, but the message thing is like, go as he go, do as he does. I mean, so. Whoever is sick or on a journey, he should fast a like number of days. Allah desires ease for you, and he desires not hardship for you. And he desires that you should complete the number and that you should exalt the greatness of Allah for having guided you and that you may give thanks. So the Holy Quran gives us those exceptions. I mean, and when it comes to uh, fasting, uh, Ramadan, it, the messenger was real distinct between the two. His thing is Ramadan to him and his followers, the FY and MGT, should not be a fast. Now, in 2023, I hear the majority of of FYs and MGT missing that important theological teaching by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. It's right there in Hadith to Live, book one and two. Ramadan, to them, they say they fasted. The messenger don't say he's fasting. 
I don't say I'm fasting. Even if you're participating in Ramadan, Ramadan is not a fast in the nation of Islam. It's a fast amongst Orthodox Muslims. And that's, and that's how the Orthodox teachings start creeping in on the nation of Islam. And that's then you know, the nation of Islam blends so much in with the Orthodox Muslims, they lose that distinction. And sad to say, they, they stray away from a law who came to person mass for Muhammad to my praises do forever, and his first, last, and only Rasul, our messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you hear him talking about a law to Ayla, a law to Panama to Ayla, a law is in you. Um, you'll hear um, things so extreme, they'd be literally like, um, Master Far Muhammad is not a law. He's not the creator of heavens and earth. And as a minister, I, I could understand the context that they're using, but the way they're saying it, they're saying it in the context of Master Far Muhammad is not God. That there is some other God, a bigger God, a, a more eternal God, an infinite God, an infinite unseen creator out there somewhere that's greater than Mass for Muhammad. One, that's an insult. But two, it's not the teachers of Elijah Muhammad. We would not care. There's no mystery God beyond a regular FOI. <laughs> I mean, a law is all of us. Quote from Message Elijah Muhammad. A law is all of us. Now, I mean, you know, we don't believe in that mystery God, the unseen God. I mean, you know, we, we believe that God sees, hears, walks, talks. That's the God that we literally believe in. Now, a person may say, well, you know, if Master Muhammad was born in this year, 1877, the message, how is he a law that's the other? And it's like, listen, when you look at man, we understand man has not just holy intellect or brain, he also has a mind. You know what I mean? And, and if you want to talk about that science, that's a science in and of itself. Like, yes, the mind of man, the messenger said, is infinite, capable of comprehending. The mind has no beginning nor ending. I mean, that mind is not a spook or a ghost just because it's unseen. As the Holy Quran teaches us, we believe in the seen and the unseen. We believe in the physical man and the mental man. You know what I mean? So, so the message of the teachings makes sense if you understand it. It's just that. In science, instead of saying mind, they say energy. In Orthodox Islam, instead of saying energy or mind, they say alcoholic or the creator. The Orthodox Muslims are correct. The scientists are correct. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam, is also correct. We're saying the same thing, just in a different way. All right? We're going to put it like that. You know what I mean? So... A lot of people, they get caught up on the signs and symbols and rituals and languages and cultures, but we're not trying to ride camels and, you know, live like we're living in the hot sand. See, when you're living in the hot sand, you, you got to have a culture that can sustain you through that. But if you're living in the snow, you can't be coming outside just wearing plain garbs and you living in um, Antarctica, you in Alaska during the cold winter seasons, living, sleeping in igloos. It's like you need some fur. <laughs> I mean, you you need some some heavy duty leather. You need some some stuff that's going to keep you warm because if you're in the dip, you got to still use good judgment and discretion as our lessons teaches us. You know what I mean? So a lot of people, they look at the Supreme Age and be like, oh, y'all, y'all not real. FYIs and MGTs because y'all don't Ramadan with the um, Orthodox Muslims and this, this, that, and the other. It's like some of us do. Some it's like we don't have a big dictator. <laughs> we don't. We don't. We, you know, we follow the teachings of Al Muhammad. You know what I mean, so so it's, it's, it's the thing we like. Peace. Do you be your way? Do we be ours? You know I mean, you know, the Holy Quran teaches us. Say, oh disbelievers, we worship not that. 
what ye worship. We say that, that spooky stuff that you worship. Nor do you worship him, Hua, Masfar Muhammad, whom we worship. Nor do we want to worship that spooky stuff that you worship. Nor do you want to worship Hua Allahi, he the God, whom we worship. To you be your way, to we be ours. Peace. We keep it there and keep it moving. High and boss. I'm like, oh, Shalom, Hotep, whatever. You know what I mean? No disrespect. You know what I mean? We're not going to, we're not going to, um, hate our brothers and sisters because they believe different from us. You know what I mean? You know, let's look at something about this fasting. Oh, let, before I forget, I'll be going. The, the, the messenger teaches, in fact, I'm going to go take us back to the actual word for word from the messenger on this short version, the summary. In the messenger's cosmology, theology, or teachings, saw me, psalm or fasting is when you go without food or drink, no water, no juice, no fruit. No dates, no figs, no bread, no food or water for at least two or more days, a minimum of 48 hours. So if you're eating when the sun so-called sets and the sun doesn't set, but they call it this. It's a lot of anti-science stuff in this. The, I mean, you know, um, if you eat. When the sun sets, the messenger thing is, that's not a psalm. That's not a fast. I mean, that's Ramadan. You're purifying. You're doing a symbolic thing there. You know what I mean? But don't call it a psalm or a fast. Don't, you're not, that's not psalm. That's not fasting. You know what I mean? Because you're eating the way Master Muhammad taught you to eat every day of your life. In November, you're supposed to eat one meal a day between four and six. You eat when the sun sets. You know what I mean? In the summertime, you're supposed to eat one meal a day. Now, I mean, you eat one meal a day in June. You eat, you're supposed to eat one meal a day when the sun sets and, and um, every day of the year, 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds of a solar year. That's the Asiatic way. Now, I'm not saying that um, Everyone does that type of discipline, but the message thing is like if you could eat one meal every other day, do that. If you eat one meal every three days, you can live up to a thousand years eating to live. I mean, however, this thing is like don't get spooky and be like, oh, the message said we can eat as much garlic and onions as we like, raw garlic, and you run around eating 10 balls of garlic, killing yourself, you'll die. You get an ulcer in your stomach. I mean, you know, so. We can't take the teachings spookily. It's like we can't apply them illogically when they're logical. You know what I mean? So the message of the thing is a fast is two the more days. A spiritual fast absolutely got to be three or more days. You can't go on a spiritual fast. You got to go three days without water or food. Now, I mean, I remember years ago I went to um went to an event. We did we did an event with um. Dr. Ali and, um, and um, you know, our people, you know what I mean, they they was confused because they was like, what you mean you go on a three-day fast? How can you live? Like, what would you, you know what you say without, what, no drinks? If you ain't drinking no water or you're not eating, what is you doing? Like, the Albalaj Ramatees, we don't eat or drink anything when we fast. And it was so absurd to them. They, they thought, I used to think like that too. I, I, I used to, when I was young, I used to see, um, our young, um, babies over in Ethiopia, I believe it was on TV and they were starving. You know what I mean? And they used to have big bellies. And I mean, I'm like, oh man, I don't even want to eat, get on my food. You know what I mean? You know, but, but the thing was, is like, I seen children that they were saying, didn't eat all week. You know what I mean? Just like, boom. You know what I mean? Men that didn't eat all month, you know, and they were still alive. <laughs> so I was curious about this. I was like, oh, a person, you know, I was greedy. So I, I was just like, I, I didn't eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I ate breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Uh, me and my homies, we, 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 we getting the munchies. We getting ice cream. I eat a half dozen donuts, does that I mean? And a quarter of orange juice. I drink the whole quart, eat six donuts. 
that's breakfast. <laughs> I mean, so so I didn't know nothing about eating a little. So I was a, a real active athlete. I was in a football, gymnastics, basketball, you name it. So my thing is like, I eat something, my body, my metabolism just burn that crap up, even though it was a lot of junk in there, a lot of poison and processed crap. But when I start learning how to, eat to live, I mean, I could, I could not eat one. No, I could not go on. No, it's before, before I Ramadan, I, I fast. I could not fast one day. I mean, but now the elder fruit, brother, he's saying so mad. Shout out to brother Carl 17 X Jackson from, uh, Muhammad's Temple number 66 out Jacksonville, Florida. Now, I mean, he, you know, he he teaching me how to fast, but he know it's my first time doing it. Now, I mean, and it's nothing for him. He was strict vegan. You know, he fast like it ain't nothing. He, he you know, he fast all the time. I mean, but I, I need my grub. <laughs> I mean, you know, so I'm, I'm literally starving. I'm thinking I'm going to die. I'm so weak by four o'clock. In the afternoon, I'm like, I got to go to sleep. And he just, he see, he must have sensed like this young boy, is, he, he going through it. Like like withdrawal pains from all the junk food he was eating all day, all the time, all them years. So he, he made me some herb tea. He gave me a little herb tea, whatever. But, you know, it's, it's like fa fasting can be difficult. But my thing was, I wanted to submit my individual will to the collective will of Allah. I wanted to strive to do good. I wanted to be pleased. Allah loves those who purify themselves. So the good thing, I didn't cheat. I, you know I mean? Four o'clock, I was, I was dying, but, you know, maybe, maybe, um, not by nine o'clock, I would have clocked in and like, man, I can't do this no more. You know what I mean? But I, I was trying, but I learned from reading the messenger teachings, this thing is like, listen, you got to use gradualism. Fasting and, and Ramadan, that stuff's not supposed to be hard. You're not supposed to starve yourself and all that. You know what I mean, it's, it's like um, if you eat three meals a day, don't drop the one meal a day or no. He said, no, break down the two meals, then break down the three. That's that's easy on your digestive system. And it made perfect sense. You know what I mean, you know, so, you know, um, when we Ramadan in December, I remember the people used to be confused, like, the Ramadan, Ramadan started? It's like they sat at the moon. I mean, you know, and we like, nah, we Ramadan in December, according to the teaching of Abulaj Muhammad. And they was like, stop for law. You know what I mean? Like, y'all are real Kafirs. You know what I mean? You know, and they would have their uh, Orthodox Ramadan. And, you know, they, they, you know, they literally used to call it Don and all that kind of stuff. Like, they was in Mecca. So, so it was like, we hear them, we see them, we respect them. Now, I mean, you know, it's like, but it's like we not Ramadan with them. Now, I mean, they used to be like, why y'all ain't fasting? Y'all, you know what I mean, brother? You know what I mean? some pain right down teach y'all supposed to fast, this, this, that, and the other. I, honestly, at the time, I'm a buck. I'm like 19. I'm a young fruit. I don't really know Arabic or none of that kind of stuff. That, now, I mean, I learned that stuff later, but it's like, at the time, I'm like, I knew the me I knew I knew my that's one thing I love. I love I knew my lessons. So I used to like pff, grind them up with God, but they would always be able to get me with that. You know how to make so light. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, what you mean? I spent a going, I'm like, oh I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, nah, I I I I mean be like, uh, Baba, you gotta know how to say your prayers in um Arabic and this that. So I'm like, you know how to make so light in Spanish? What you mean? You know how to make salat. It's a lot of Puerto Ricans in North Philly. You know how to make salat in, in Spanish. Nah. I right then. It's like just because you can say something in another language. It's like if you, you go down German town, you know how to say your, your prayers in German. I mean, it's, it's thousands of languages on the planet. Just because you speak Arabic don't don't make you like I'm, I'm saying I don't know English like that. I mean, you know, it's like it's, this is a bastard language. You know what I mean, so it's like, nah, my man. I mean, I'm, that ain't for me. I riding with the messengers' messes in this age of mess. Now, I mean, you know, so Jesus and his disciples experienced this. Let's let's turn to our Bibles. Let's look at the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses, hmm, 
Let's take 17 to 22. All right, I'm going to read this in a meaning. All right. In fact, let me take it from 15 to put it in context. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. See, see, Jesus got the street people. He, he got the crackheads, the drunks, the homeless, the ex-cons. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how the land was. You know what I mean? He, he called the poor and wretched of the earth. You know what I mean? And said, come follow me. You know what I mean? And you're not saved by your works. You're saved by grace. You know what I mean? You're, you're saved by the love of the law. Not, not that you can fast your way into heaven. You know what I mean? When the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? <laughs> See how spooky people be, that holy holy ghost stuff, the holy rollers, they faking the funk. But, you know, they, they acting all pious and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? See, now here you got John's disciples. You see, see the different schools of thought, the Methodists, the different sects, the different branches of the nation of Islam. You got the Orthodox over here. You got this minister, that minister, different ministers. You know what I mean? Those that want to keep the raw teachings and the other ones that just, you know what I mean? So, so Jesus uses some God wisdom here. You know what I mean? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. See, we're saying the black man is God. As long as you got a conscious black man, a conscious minister, a conscious captain, secretary, MGT teacher, whatever, teaching you the reality of God, you like y'all good. I mean, <laughs> like, like y'all y'all fasting because y'all purifying yourself by not taking part of the devil's world and Yaku's technology. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If they do, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wine skins. See, you can't take and mix that old spooky stuff with this Al Jadi Islam. So you have Al Arik Islam, that's the Arabic term for the old Islam, and you have Al Jadi Islam, the new Islam. If you try to mix that old orthodox stuff into the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it falls apart every single time. Listen, 1975, they mix our Arik Islam, the old Islam, into the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And 99.99% .99 of the nation of Islam, the ministers, captains, secretaries, private soldiers, everybody, MGTs, the whole nine, they thought that it would make them a better Muslim, a stronger Muslim. Down Balaj Muhammad was like, Spooky, what is y'all talking? Y'all are not Muslims. He's like, nah, if you say you're a Muslim, you got you say you, you know, you you you're a Muslim by nature, if anything. Islam is not a religion. It's not a religary. It's not going back to bind and tie up and fasten and limit. He's like, that's the old Islam. That's the orthodox stuff. Now, I mean, it's things like, nah, Master Muhammad is coming with that Al Jadi Islam. Master Muhammad taught us some new Islam. Let me see if I got, I don't want to jump around here too much, but.
I just know, I'm gonna say it off the top of my head. It's in, it's in Supreme Wisdom, Volumes Book 1 and 2, 1957. Now, Elijah Muhammad teaches us in there that the old Islam is gonna wage war against the new Islam. Now, the people is gonna have to decide. Now, I mean, are you gonna go with the Orthodox Islam and think that there's life after physical death, that there are jinn as demons that come out of the ether and that there is a mystery God and stuff like that. He's like, that's not what he's, the, that's not what Master Muhammad revealed. So don't mix that spooky stuff up with the, you can't mix the new teachers, the new Islam into them old skins. Cause you're gonna burst the skin and waste the messenger teachers. These are like, you can't cast your pearls amongst the swine. Don't feed the children's bread to the dogs. It's like, nah. Everything simply is just not for everybody. We're not looking for big numbers. See, people be thinking like, oh, it's a billion Muslims. So what? <laughs> I mean, if I if I see a billion people jumping off the cliff, I'm like, oh, dude, everybody jump off the cliff. I'm gonna jump too. <laughs> I don't think so, homie. <laughs> I mean, they'd be like, but so-and-so said, I don't care what so-and-so said. I mean, but so-and-so said some good stuff. Oh, I, I ride with that good stuff, but that jumping off the cliff part, nah, homie. <laughs> I mean, that physically dying to go see some mystery guy, I'm cool. Our lessons teaches us that the physical dead is not known to return from the physical grave. All this history of Islam has never revealed anything that no one has been able to come back from a physical death. Now, I mean, so it's a lot of spooky stuff that get mixed up into the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. Let us turn to some How to Eat the Live page. Uh, I'm going to just bounce around in there from pages between 48 and 57. All right. This is How to Eat the Live, book two, 1972. Just to give you some actual, not actual facts, natural facts on what it was that we was just talking about. Okay. This is how you write Psalm me or fasting in Arabic. This, this is an old book that I had, but the, um, the messenger teaches us Okay, here we go. What I was saying, I was being petitious, but I was explaining how if you got a conscious MGT teacher, a conscious minister, a conscious FOI, or what have you, um, and you miss. It's like you ain't got a Ramadan with no Orthodox muscle. You, you you know the black man is God. I mean you you know you know the angels ain't in the sky. They you know you they they believe that Mikel wings is these big giant bird type wings. It's like that's all metaphors. That's all symbolic. Now, I mean you know it's like in this day and time that it's 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 like literally spread like wildfire. All this spooky stuff about. The people of ancient Iraq, Babylon, I mean, baby London, I mean, the Anunnaki, and the, the you know, they, they, they came down and made it with the women. And it's like, it's like, um, it's like someone a thousand or three thousand years in the future watching the movie Wakanda Forever in this day and time. They be like, oh, the people, they, back then they had um, Wakanda Forever. They had Black Adam, um, the ancient god Thoth, and they mixed them with such and such, and they went to the planet. They like, yo, cultures have science fiction. <laughs> Just because they be like, it's written. That's, if I go, if, imagine a, 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 a earthquake destroyed the majority of the planet, say the meteor coming in February or whatever, hit the planet and, you know what I mean, we lost civilization and a lot of stuff got buried or whatever, and somebody find an ancient public library and they dig it all through it, the books disintegrate the dust, they go, like, oh man, they go, like, oh, we found this one book, it, it was preserved and 
we lost 86% of the chapters, but some of the pages we got in the computer that we use in this modern day and time can translate it. And it's, it's talking about how the lady, she was with this guy called Peter Parker, and he was bitten by a radioactive spider. They was experimenting with radioactive activity in antiquity, and they mixed the insects into the radiation, and they produced this radioactive bug, and it bit Peter on his hand, and he turned into a Spider-Man. It's like, you're taking it out of context. You read too much into this, fan. I mean, it's like, just because it says that, that's not what it meant to us. We didn't take it literally. We we understood metaphors and parables and analogies and simile. It's, that's human nature. But you, don't, you don't think they had stories in antiquity? I mean, and, 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 and it's a thing where you don't, in, in our day and time, um, if, 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 if I see my homie come home from prison and he chilling doing this thing and he blow up, I'm like, man, my homie, he blew up, you know what I mean? Shit, wallow doing this thing, this thing. I don't mean it literally. <laughs> it's like, it's like somebody, some, you're taking it out of context. You know what I mean? So, so just because something is old, <laughs> And is written. You know, imagine. Let me see. So in this day and time, you know what I mean, it's 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 it's, li it's really hard to even imagine the spooky stuff because I don't even think like that. But imagine, uh, imagine them going inside of a, a a mall. Say the mall in this day and time got destroyed by a tsunami. Whatever, bad mud covered it. The, the sun baked it and it was locked in this hot clay for thousands of years and they dug through the clay and they found this mall and they seen this mannequin of Santa Claus with this big black belt but he had these little L's but they seen the reindeer and when they activated the nose it lit up and it was red. Rudolph, that's ripped. Rudolph really existed. We found one. <laughs> it's like, y'all are really not that intelligent like you think. <laughs> I mean, see, spookism is so illogical. It'll have you ever reading and speaking, but failing to understand. There is nothing spooky. There's nothing supernatural. In the, in the natural universe. See, the natural is supernatural itself. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's like, it may be a mathematical wonder, but you'll call it a miracle because you don't understand it. You know what I mean? But, but it's like, that's human nature. You know I mean, we like the, our, our brains are designed to imagine. That's how we create things. You know what I mean? Like, like when I was a kid, they had, on the Jetsons, they had cell phones. Captain Kurt had a cell phone. <laughs> I mean, and from studying the fantasy, you extrapolate facts and be like, okay, yeah, we can do that. We can make that, something to do that. We can communicate. Now, I mean, you know, it's it's like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You could literally come to your house like Captain Kurt and be like, um, computer. Heat up my coffee. <laughs> I mean, like, like I got um, what's that we got? We got I got Google Home. Now I mean, we got we got we got um, ringtone doorbells. Somebody motion, it comes right up on my iPhone. <laughs> I mean, it'd be like okay, my 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 phone uh, uh, set dates. Be like, oh, you know, you gotta go to the dentist Thursday. <laughs> now I mean, you know, it, it's like it's like um. You can talk to the TV. I mean, turn the channel uh, such such. Turn on Netflix. I mean, and and, and, and and it's not anything spooky with it. But if you don't understand, my great grandmother thought peace be upon. Her. If my great grandmother was somehow able to come back in this day and time, she would consider this 
a wonderland. She would consider this a land of magic. Like, what? Yo, no, nah, this, what? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it just be that strange to someone. You know what I mean? So, you know, you know, putting a, a, a cup of water inside of something and pushing a button and you see it boiling, be like, I didn't see no fire. You open it up. How did it do that? I mean, you're like it's a microwave. This, you know what I mean, it's, it's nothing spooky, fam. You know what I mean, you know, and, and and that's that's how we get spooky. That's how organized religions, organized cults, and and and, and philosophers, you know what I mean, lead you down a path of trick knowledge and take you, spook you up so much you step right outside yourself. Your brain would be like, oh. I, I'm not even here. I came from uh, another planet. Like, what planet? Why is you ashamed of the planet you on? <laughs> this is a beautiful planet you on. This is a powerful match. You know, you know the genius, the holy intellect it is to spark an atom to produce the sun, moon, and stars and the planets and, you know what I mean? And the, and the, and the sea creatures and, and the animals and the birds and the humans all over the place. It's like, man, we don't need no more. I mean, we just need to get out our own way, get out the ignorance, leave the superstition, the mythology alone, and come together and start building. Then we can master the universe. Then you'd be like, oh, damn, the whole time we really were the gods. I mean, but our people is just spooked out that mind. So the messenger, like, like Jesus, he explained to him. You know, remember we said in, um, what was that? That was Mark chapter 2, verse 18. Jesus explained to him that, you know, my followers ain't got to fast as long as they got the son of man. They like, they got God in that midst. They, they ain't rhyming down with no orthodox Muslims. They know the black man God. That's what Jesus was telling them in Mark. Now look at what the Lamb said in How Do You to Live, book number 2 in 1972 on page number 47. He said, and I quote, we are taught and all religions teach fasting. So that includes us too. Of course, here's the qualifier, the exception. Of course, as long as we are in the presence of God, we do not have to fast. But we are not always in his presence. In the hereafter, when all people will receive rewards of goodness, who see the here? Who see the hereafter? There will be no fasting. Now, if you're FOI, an MGT, understand our concept of heaven, our concept of the hereafter. I mean, after what? After the destruction of the devil, civilization, the culture, the technology, we will have no Orthodox Ramadan. We will have no December Ramadan. <laughs> for what? We're woke now. <laughs> See, right now, that's from Muhammad's physically not here. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's physically not here, but the Honorable Minister Farrakhan here. The Honorable Silas Muhammad said, you're here. You see? So it's up to you. What, what level are you on in your striving for peace of mind and contentment, money, good homes, and friendships, and all walks of life. What, what stage or dimension of thought are you on? Because we're on different vibrations. Master for Mama says seven mind dimensions, the physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, the soul, the self, and the will. The will is the plane of the gods. Everybody ain't on the will plane. A lot of people still on the physical plane. Hey, I want to roll me down. I got to bang my head on the ground. I got to physically wash my hands. No, you got to purify your works. You see, it's a science there. But what level are you on? Are you taking the old Islam or the new Islam? Are you following the Christ or the Antichrist? See, in 1975, an anti-Master Fart Muhammad, an anti-Crusher, an anti-Christ came into our miss on Savior's Day. And that Antichrist, Iman Warfdi Muhammad, the son of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, he changed Ramadan. It was part of the Antichrist thing that destroyed the nation of Islam from within. It worked. It destroyed us. There were no more FOIs, no more MGTs. He told you, he said, put down my father's books. 
but throw your lessons away. That right there should let you know. Pick back up Message Elijah Muhammad's lessons and pick back up Message Elijah Muhammad's books because it was the absence of our Jadi Islam or the new Islam that caused us to become mentally dead after our mental rising or mental resurrection from the life-giving teachers of Ahmad Elijah Muhammad. He mentally killed our people with that trick knowledge. So let us go on. We're going to turn to page 50. Now, in this part, I want to show y'all the Ahmad Elijah Muhammad, as I said, the majority of FYIs and MDT, sad to say, please pick up your Holly to Live book too and look this up. Page number 50. We do not consider Ramadan a fast. Yeah, I'm fasting, brother. You're like, oh, oh, bro, you want, want a uh, piece of bean pie? You want some water? You want the juice? Oh, no, bro, I'm fasting. You're not fasting? <laughs> what kind of spooky, googly gook you, 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 you talked about? This is with the lamps. I'm going to read it to y'all word for word. I just wanted to show you to you see I mark it all up because I, I I I believe this stuff. I study this stuff. Piece of the part. All right. This is what the Lamb teaches a fast is. Saw me. This is what a fast is to a FOI. All right. The messenger says, So to break my people up from the worship of the false birthday of Jesus, so I'm about Yahshua. We turn to abstaining from eating in the daylight hours during the month of December. This is in no way a fast. This is in no way. No, look how he qualified this. He's like, don't even try to make a symbol. He said, in no way is our December Ramadan a fast. No way, family. It's not a fast. All right? Don't take our leaf word. I'm saying, forget me. Take the direct the direct and original and divine teachers of Elijah Muhammad, who he said, leave my teachings as it is. Page number 75. How do you live, bro? These is, the, these is the messenger's message in this age of mess. He goes on to say, when we abstain from food for so short a time as for early morning until after sundown and darkness begins to appear, we cannot call this a fast, for we are eating the same way that we have always been eating, one meal a day. It is no fast to me. That's a quote from the book. When he says me, that me is talking about Messenger Elijah Muhammad himself. It's not talking about Alif. It's not talking about somebody else. The messenger says, it is no fast to me and to my followers. When he say followers, he means the FOI and MGT that claim to believe as the messenger of the law believes. <laughs> not as the Orthodox believe, not as the Jews believe, not as the Hebrews believe. Everybody got Ramadans and fasts. And it's like, you know what I mean? You got Lent, you got um Europeans that put crosses on you don't run up putting the cross on fasting this, this is Lent. I'm a, I'm not gonna eat nothing but some fish. It's like, no, homie, you 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 missing the point, Master Muhammad. It's like, no, we taught the Jews to eat fish on Friday. That's a science of the gods. Which would you you coming in as a, a servant, a slave again. So the messenger says, when we abstain from food for so short a time as from early morning until after sundown and darkness begins to appear, we cannot call this a fast, for we're eating the same way that we have always been eating, one meal in that day. It is no fast to me and to my followers to eat a meal after Sunday. We cannot call it a fast. A fast should be from two to three days without eating food. If we are seeking spiritual advancement, we should fast for three days. In the case of the Orthodox Muslims worshiping Ramadan by not eating until after sunset and darkness approaches, they can eat all night long if they want to until the next morning at dawn. They call this a fast. See, the Orthodox Muslims who we love, respect, it's, it's, it's different 
theologies, spiritual sciences on earth. So we we know you got Christians, Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses, whatever. We're not we're not trying to bump heads with them. We're trying to explain why we don't partake in teachings that they teach. You know what I mean? It's like in their theology, if you so-called fast while from you know from dawn to dusk and then it's time to break your fast and I I let me put it like this because I I've actually rhymed it down with them before. Say you took and didn't eat all day. Then they'd be like, okay, the sun set and they literally get it to the science. They actually got calendars and clocks and times and stuff like that. And they'd be like, okay, it's time to break the fast. Now, you know, you make voodoo, stinja, tie your moon, gusha. You take a shower, bath, bird bath, wash up, whatever. You purify yourself. Now, I mean, we come in, you know what I mean? Those that not to make salat, sabana kalahumu wa biham dika wa ta baraka smuka wa ta ala jaduka wa la ila gavuk. Now, I mean, we, you know, we not to do all that too. I wrote a whole book on it. <laughs> I mean, but you know, they'd be like, okay, we're going to break the fast. You might get a little, they pass around cups. It might be a little cup with, say, uh, sugar-coated date or fig or something like that there, and a little cup of water. Just something to, you know, to um, get your digestive system ready to eat the meal. You know, you need a little sugar or whatever. You know what I mean? And then they serve the food. I used to see brothers, FOIs and Sunnis, <laughs> They would get uh, two mils on one mill, eat the two mils, then go get another mill and wrap it up and take it with them, or eat a third mill right there, and then eat, and then wake up and eat the sahur mill because you can eat breakfast too. Now, I mean, the message says that you can eat a light breakfast if you wanted to. It's not a sin, but I seen, bro. I used to joke with brothers because. Brothers used to get fat during Ramadan. I'm like, yo, your cholesterol going up. Your blood, you're you're eating more during Ramadan than you do the rest of the year, and you're calling that a fast. I think you're missing the whole point. <laughs> I mean, so so that's not. Yeah, I mean, it's like you you can't you can't call that a fast according to Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings. Now, I mean, so he's real clear about that. He's real specific, and he repeated it over and over again. He's, then he goes on to say, they say that they do this in the month of Ramadan because Ramadan is the month in which the Holy Quran was revealed to Muhammad. But the way that I understand, when he say I, that's talking about the way that Abu Elijah Muhammad understand the Quran and the Bible and the Torah and the Septuagint and the Vulgate and the Sanskrit or the scriptures, the messenger says, but the way I understand scripture, it teaches us that Muhammad received the Holy Quran over a period of 23 years. Muhammad did not receive the Holy Quran in one night or in one day. And if he received the whole Holy Quran in the month of Ramadan, why fast in that month? See, the message is like, that's not a good reason to fast. You say you fast because the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Quran wasn't revealed in no month of Ramadan. You know what I mean? But this is where the Hadiths creep in. You know what I mean, like like the Russian Bukhari. You know what I mean? You know, you know. He he he's supposed to roll all these hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, hadiths and it was all these other grafted joints. I don't fault them. I look at the nation Islam today and see all these spooky hadiths coming up in the teachings of Ahmad Elijah Muhammad in this day and time. In 2023, it's all types of hadiths jumping off in the nation Islam. People are literally getting spooked out their mind. Now I mean, it's is 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 now I mean it's it's a thing. It's literally. A situation where as time keeps moving, if we don't keep a lawless messenger teachings out front, the people is going to, in the future, be trying to figure out, like, what did Elijah teach? 
You know what I mean? Be like, well, here you, you got them saying they Bilalians and they over here, they putting up the American flag saying they boom. We put up the flag of Islam, an American flag, because we on the tip like, which one is going to survive the war Armageddon? <laughs> I mean, hold on for one second, in fact. <laughs> I mean, this is why we had a black flag up. You see us with this stuff up. Yeah. You see us put it up. Okay, this flag, we had a flag up with the flag of Islam. Flag of Islam, American flag. Flag of Islam, American flag. Because we're talking about the war Armageddon. We, we asking a rhetorical question. Which one is going to survive the war of Armageddon? Should we come under the crossroads of technology with slavery, suffering, and death? Or should we accept the teachings of the law came to prison as for Muhammad and go with freedom, justice, and equality? I mean, should we go with the unnatural or the natural, the universal or the spooky? Know what I mean? So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he explained to us, if we are given what we want, Holy Quran, in that month without fasting, I cannot understand why we should fast in the month of Ramadan for the first revelation of the Holy Quran was already given in that month without fasting. It would look more proper for us, talking about FYs and MGTs, that believe is the messenger belief, to be rejoicing over the great salvation Holy Quran that the Lord God sent to us in the month of Ramadan. If, if, this is the qualifier, if you can convince me, meaning if you can convince Messenger Elijah Muhammad, and we should be able to say, if you convince a FY or MGT, if you could convince me it is necessary to fast in the month of Ramadan because of Muhammad receiving the Holy Quran or the first revelation of the Holy Quran, then I will go along with it. However, the messenger said, however, because he ain't doing it. You might be doing it, but the messenger ain't doing it. You see? However, since the Quran was received over a period of years, I am very much baffled in trying to understand why we should fast in the month of Ramadan. The message is scratching. Like, why is y'all Ramadan with the Orthodox Arab? Why is y'all bowing y'all head? Who is y'all praying to when you, when you bow down and you make your slant to, to the spirit God? Who is this Allah that y'all talking about? Y'all talking about Master Muhammad? When you salam salam alaikum rahman to Allah, we're very kind to. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? See, that's the that's the sin. The sin is you're bowing down and worshiping a spook of law. You're not talking about the black man is God. I, I, I can respect you. Be like, all right, peace to the brother over there, peace to the brother on the, over there. Now I'm peace to the brother front, behind, whatever. Cool. If that's your knee out, your intent, cool. I'm not doing that, but I'm saying I understand. You know what I mean? But who is that mystery God? All right? So the messenger... He tells us, we should be rejoicing because of receiving the Holy Quran, and we should teach others to rejoice throughout the month of Ramadan if it is because the Holy Quran was revealed in that month. Of course, this is the Arab way. Read that again, Ali. Of course, this is the Arab way. The Arab way. Not the FOI way. Not the MGT. We're not Arabs. I mean, we're the original Arabs. Arab. Rabbil Alamin, the Lord of the Worlds, I mean, the Rabbi, the Jews, I mean, Judaism, with the Lords, I mean, yeah, that they originally were black. I mean, the all of the Arabs were dark skinned black people originally. I mean, but the Rum, the 30th sword of the Holy Quran, the Romans have conquered, as the Quran puts it. The Rum, the Romans came in there and they conquered that area. I mean, you you got all these wars with the Turks and Constantinople. It's all this 
different regional stuff happening. But at the end of the day, it was the gods fighting the devils. It was some of the gods selling out and going along with the devils. All right? So that's the reality of that stuff. Of course, this is the Arab way in their religious belief. Why is FY and MVTs going with the Arabs in their religious belief in 2023? Huh? That they should fast, but I do say that it is not necessary to fast to get something that you have already received. We should all thank a law and be grateful to a law God for giving us the truth or the great revelation, Holy Quran, that will guide us into a clearer truth than we have had in the past. So, I, meaning Messenger Elijah Muhammad, so I am not asking my followers to fast in the month of December because of the birth of a prophet, Jesus, nor do we want to worship his birth or worship because some great revelation was sent down to another prophet. No, it is just to keep my followers from worshiping falsehood, to keep away from the trick, the spooky stuff, huh? I mean, you know, that's that's why we're doing it in December. You know what I mean? Instead of truth and to prevent them from spending that money in the falsehood, instead of truth and to prevent them from spending that money in the falsehood of Santa Claus. There are so many untruths that the people of untruth white race have misled us in. We must come out of untruth. We must come out of falsehood. He says... He goes on. But you are not actually fasting when you're going to eat every day, regardless to what time you may set for the meal. If you eat within 24 hours, you cannot really consider it as a fast. And so I say to my followers, we are not fasting in December. We are just abstaining from taking a part with false Worship. Just eating one meal a day in December, November, October, September, July, whatever. You know what I mean? We abstain from eating meat throughout the month of Ramadan, the month of December. By nature, we're vegans. It's not a sin to eat some fish during Ramadan, but it's, it's better not to eat no meat, period. You know what I mean? It is good for us to abstain from eating meat, for we should not eat meat at all. Meat is not good for our health nor for our body. Actually, by nature, we are not made to live off meat. A law God who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, taught me that no meat is good for us except the little young pigeon, squab, that has never flown from its nest, but we eat meat. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad family, he gave us a unique culture. A distinct teaching, a unique teaching, a pure teaching, a raw teaching. And that teaching is designed to help you and me navigate in this era of falsehood, superstition, spookism, and Yaku's tricknology. I leave you as I came with the greeting words of peace. And I close with the message. Only the messenger's message can guide us through this age of mess. Peace and blessings, family. The struggle continues.